Hi, welcome to this lecture on a port scanning overview. So today I'm just going to give you a loose idea of port scanning and the specific tool that we're going to use to do it. My hope is that out of this you'll understand what port scanning is used for and what kind of capabilities it has. So port scanning is typically used for a variety of things. Um, it's a good way to find all the hosts on a network. So let's say I'm, I'm in a corporate environment and I want to see all the machines running on my local network. I can run a port scan to check and find out what kind of computers are there. Um, for a given computer that is running on a network, I can find what services it's running, you know, what kind of uh, application services it has. And I can also figure out what type of firewalls are in place on that network. Now, why would I want to do all this? Like, who needs this sort of capability? Um, it's useful for doing a security audit, so this would be like the good guys. Um, I might run it on my own network to find unsecured services or computers that are connected to the network that I didn't know about or that maybe shouldn't be. I can use it to verify that my firewall is enforcing rules correctly, etc., etc. So there's a lot of good reasons that I might want to probe the computers on my own network to see what they're running. Uh, attackers commonly use port scanning software as well. They use it to find machines that are running vulnerable services that they can exploit. Uh, they'll use it to find flaws in firewall rules that might be able to let them break into a network that otherwise might not be um, available to them. Um, so yeah, port scanning is commonly used by attackers as well. It's also used by researchers. Um, a lot of researchers will use port scanning to probe pieces of the internet looking for specific statistics or information about the computers running there. So for example, they might look and see um, what type of web servers are commonly being run online, et cetera, et cetera. So th there's lots of information that researchers would get as well. So probably the most widely used uh, port scanning software is called NMAP. And NMAP stands for Network Mapper. NMAP is a very fast port scanner. What it does is it sends test packets to hosts and it watches the replies that they send back in order to determine what, what, whatever information it can about those hosts. It can find computers on a network. It can find the open ports on those computers. It can find the version of the services running on those ports. And it can even, in a number of cases, make a guess as to what operating system that computer is running, all remotely over the network. Uh, the website for NMAP is www.nmap.org. Um, there's a lot of information on there. So I want to make a quick side note here just because I thought this was cool. Uh, NMAP has been used to scan the entire internet. Uh, in fact, it's probably been used multiple times to scan the entire internet, both by researchers and attackers alike. Um, this is an interesting website, not necessarily run by the most moral people in the world, um, but they did do a full scan of the internet um, using some potentially illegal means. But their results are kind of interesting, and I just wanted to show this picture out of their results. Um, this mentions down here at the bottom in very small print that when they ran their scan, there was 460 million reachable IP addresses that they found. So when they scanned the internet, they scanned 460 million individual computers. And they did that between June of 2012 and October 2012. And what this map shows is loosely the density and location of where all of those computers are. And, it, and it's just interesting to see that it's kind of what you would expect, right? There's more computers in more densely populated areas, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but this was this sort of thing to figure out, okay, what's the geographic distribution of active computers that are online? Well, you get that sort of information by actively scanning the entire internet, and that's what these guys did. So just an interesting side note, just to show you, NMAP really is a, a very powerful tool that can be used in very powerful ways. Okay, so when you run NMAP, there are five phases of a scan that NMAP does. The first phase, phase is called host discovery. And during host discovery, the goal of NMAP is to figure out what computers are online in a given set of IP addresses that you've specified. So it's just trying to say, okay, you specified a range of IPs. I want to know out of those IPs which computers there are online. Sometimes we'll call this the ping phase, but usually host discovery. The next step is port scanning. For all of the valid uh, hosts that it found, it, wants to, it does a port scan on those machines to figure out what ports are open. And remember, the port is related to either TCP or UDP and what application service is being run on a given port. After it finishes scanning the ports, it does version detection. So for all of the open ports that it found, it connects to those ports and tries to kind of communicate a little bit with whatever service is running to determine what version it is or a little bit more about it. After version detection, uh, NMAP can perform 
operating system detection. So it'll use the information it gathered before from the versions of the services, and it'll do a bit more probing with some specially crafted packets that we'll talk about later uh, to try and guess what operating system the computer is running. And finally, the last stage, of course, is output. So we run the first four stages to gather information. In the last stage, we output the results to the user. And Nmap can output its results in a number of formats, but we're probably just going to use the general output uh, for the exercises we do in class and in the homework. But that's the last stage. So when Nmap scans ports, uh, there are three potential stages that it could be in, or stages, three potential states that it could be in. The first state is the port could just be open. Uh, an open port means that there's a service at that port that's receiving data and communicating. And the other, another state that a port could be in is just closed. There's no service at that port, and there's just nothing running there. Uh, a third state that it could be in is filtered. Filtered means that I can't tell if there's anything running at that port. And we'll see why, like exactly what it would mean for a port to be open, closed, or filtered when we talk about the specifics of a port scan. But for now, just know that when I run a scan, I'm going to get back one of those three states. Now, there are two other states that are much more rare. They only occur with certain types of scans that, again, we'll talk about later. But one would be open or filter. The little pipe there is an or. And that means that when Nmap scanned that port, it knows the port's either open or filtered, but it's not sure which. The only thing it's sure of is that the port is not closed. <laughs> or another kind of strange state is it could be closed or filtered. That means that the port's either closed or filtered, but Nmap at least knows for certain it's not open. Uh, so those are kind of some strange states, but I wanted to at least get this out here so it'll help you as we read through uh, sample scans. So we have our three main states, open, closed, and filtered, and our two more rare states, open or filtered and closed or filtered. So let's look at a sample scan. I stole this from the Nmap book, but we'll do some live scans in class to look over and talk through. Um, so in this particular sample scan, uh, this is the output that Nmap gave, and this is just for one host. So I've kind of cut out the parts for the other hosts in this scan. Uh, so this is an Nmap scan report for this particular IP address. <clears throat> what Nmap is saying is, okay, I ran, a, I ran a port scan on this IP, and I found all of these open ports, and so it lists them out for you. Okay, ports, port 22 is open, ports 53, 110, 113, 143. These are all open. We can tell that because the state column says open. What about all the other ports? I mean, there's a lot of ports. I said it's a 16-bit number, right? So that means that there's 65,535 different ports. This only lists, what, six? So what about all the others? Well, there's a note up here that says the 65,530 ports scanned but not shown are in the state filtered. So that's important to note, that when Nmap scanned this machine, it found six open ports, and all the other ports were filtered. Filtered meaning uh, we, couldn't, we didn't get back a good reading about open or closed. Now, filtered usually means firewalled. It usually means that there's some sort of firewall in place. Okay, so Nmap gave me the port numbers, the state of the ports. <clears throat> oh, whoops, one of them I forgot to mention. Port 113 here isn't open, it's closed. So that's just an interesting note. Now, for the ports that were open, Nmap connected and got some information. So port 22 is typically SSH, so this service column just displays what is typical for a port, uh, well, for a service that would be running on that port. And the version column is the result of Nmap actually connecting to that port and seeing what it was. So when Nmap connected to this machine on port 22, what it found is that what was running on that port is OpenSSH, which is a service, version 3.7.1p2. So it tells me the exact version running. It also extracted out the, uh, the public key being used uh, by SSH on that port because that SSH provides encrypted communication. And so it asked for the public key that's being used. Um, it connected to port 53, which would normally be DNS. Found that this machine's running bind 9.2.1. It connected to the POP3 port and found that this machine is running a, a specific type of email server, Courier POP3, but it doesn't know the version number. It just knows that that's the type it is. Um, same thing here with the IMAP. And then we can also see 3128 it was running a squid web proxy. So it's just interesting to see that all of this is stuff that Nmap can determine just by connecting to, um, connecting to the different ports on the machine. Now as we get down lower, uh, we can see that Nmap tried to make a guess 
of exactly what operating system was running. And it came up with, okay, this is somewhere Linux 2.4 or Linux 2.5. That's a big range, actually. Um, and it expands on that a bit more in the details. But that's a huge range of, of Linux kernel versions. It's not all that useful to me, but it at least tells me this isn't a new machine because the current Linux kernel is up to, what, I think it's 3.9 now. Um, and then this is kind of an interesting note. It can also tell me the uptime, how long it's been since this machine was rebooted. So this is, it's interesting to think that all of this is information you can get just by probing over the network. Okay, so I want to provide some important warnings on Nmap. Do not use Nmap to scan machines on the internet. Just because some guys on the, from the slides I showed before used Nmap to scan the entire internet does not mean that you should try it. If you do, angry system administrators who see these scans against their networks will report you to your internet service provider. In Qatar, your internet service provider is probably Uridu. Uridu might do something about it. I don't know, I've never tried, but most internet service providers don't like it when you port scan from their networks. Also, do not use this to scan machines at QU. ITS does not like this. And it might be a punishable offense. I'm not sure. Um, I, I haven't actually read through all of the detailed uh, acceptable use policies at QU. Um, but I'm pretty certain that port scanning their machines could get you in some trouble. So do not do that. Um, and uh, I want to make an important note here. I will have a testbed for you soon that you can play with. Um, so you'll be able to connect into a testbed that I've created that will let you play with port scanning some machines on my um, sealed contained testbed. It's a safe place for you to experiment with Nmap. So summing up, Nmap is a fast, powerful tool for quickly scanning computers and seeing what services they're running and other information about it. Uh, Nmap has a lot of options. There's a lot of different types of scans you can run, different features you can use on it, and we're only going to use a very small percentage of them uh, in this class, actually. Uh, and most importantly for today, do not run Nmap against any computers you do not have spe specific permission for. And if you do, when you get caught, don't tell them that you're in my class, okay? Let's just save everybody the hassle. Thanks.